It's no secret that we love GTRs. So while at TX2K 2023, we wanted to take a closer look at the R35 GTRs that were racing at the event. And with the plan of taking GTR Festival to the USA, we wanted to chat with the leading GTR tuning shops and owners about the GTR scene in the USA and where it's heading. There is no real classes for Skyline GTRs, especially ones with sequentials, at TX2K, but the R35 categories are huge and hotly contested. DCT is for street cars and requires interior and DOT tyres, and they qualify into three brackets. GTR 68 class is for GTRs with a maximum compressor inducer size of 68 millimeters and no nitrous. And it's also a very fiercely contested category. GTR Unlimited is exactly that, unlimited, but this is where the controversy has started in the last year or so. The question being raised now is what actually makes one car a GTR and another not a GTR? Let's look at some examples. Max R35 from the shop Houston is now rear wheel drive with a turbo 400 transmission, making it a more conventional rear wheel drive drag car. George Dodworth's Night Fury went two-wheel drive and his new Night Terror is basically a pro mod with a VR38 as it's a full chassis car with Liberty and 4Link. John Odom's car is essentially a pro mod but has the factory steel roof and quarters but it's a supercharged V8 engine swap. The ETS R35 is now a rear-wheel drive pro mod chassis and things get even more confusing with Giddy's new R35 GTR being a full tube frame car from Dodson in New Zealand. Same as the ST Hitech R35, but it is still all-wheel drive and uses the same running gear as the previous ETS R35. The new tube chassis makes for a lighter car and better packaging. So, are any of these GTRs still GTRs? And if so, which ones and why? Really? It's up to the event promoter which category they fit in for racing, which is fine. But for records, we don't think the arguments will ever end. We caught up with John Odom at TX2K to talk about his car and his thoughts on the topic. Hey guys, John Odom, Odom Racing, checking out. You guys need to see the original. No, I can't, <laughs> can't say. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm John Odom from Odom Racing. Uh, I got the TV show Street Outlaws on Discovery, no prep kings. A uh, little bit of drama, as you guys know, I wanted to show you an authentic, real Nissan GTR 35 with all the original parts, and here it is, folks. We started racing Nissan GTRs on the track. So five, six, seven years ago, we were on Laguna Seca, Sonoma. We kind of ran the California series. And then I kind of got interested in drag racing. Uh, PPC, who's a shop in Salt Lake City, I bought an 09 GTR. You know, I put some turbos on it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was fast. And then the next thing you know, we started working up into getting something fast. And Brad says, hey, why don't you check out Texas 2K? He said, it's a great race. A lot of GTRs are there. I became friends with Peter. And uh, he's, I bought a 2019 Nismo, which they only sent at that time one to the United States. And so he's like, hey, bring the car down, let's take a look. So our first year we came down here, you know, I raced, we didn't do really well. I wasn't a great driver, but we did pretty good, you know, blew a bunch of GTR transmissions, which everybody knows about that, especially you. So the next year we put some money in the car. We gutted it, we put 68 millimeters on it and we turned it into a drag car. And uh, came the year after that, made it to the finals, blew a transmission. So super frustrated about that. <laughs> the year after that, we did some more work on the car and we ended up winning last year. We won the 68 millimeter class last year. And so this has a very special place in my heart because we won that race, right? You know, things progressed. The TV show called, we decided to build an authentic GTR 35 and for the show and uh, it's all original parts. It really has the authentic motor in it. We just make it, we, 
just, it's just a cover over the top. Right? It's just, yeah. yeah. It, 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 exactly. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's really a V6. We just make it look like a V8, but no. So, you know, we, what we wanted to do when we built it, you know, we, we always ran GTRs from the, from the track to, to doing drag racing. So when we did that, I wanted to bring an, an import to the show, right? And so we've done really well bringing that to the show. It's brought a lot of different fan base and people love the car, you know, especially there. Now I'm getting some haters on the GTR side, which is great, right? That's what it's about. Mainly you, and that's okay. I just wanted to, you know, showcase a different style car because most of those cars in the No Prep King series are, you know, Camaros, Mustangs, older cars. And so I just wanted to bring a new flair to it. We feel like we did a really great job. I was Rookie of the Year last year. I won five, or went to five, five finals, won one. The last one I beat Ryan Martin at Ennis in the finals in the grade eight. So, you know, of course, Texas has a really special place in my heart for that reason, which is cool because I hear next year, Texas 2K is moving to Ennis. So I have some really good the history there too. So we're excited, but we're super glad you game. We're super glad you guys do what you do and we love you guys. And you know, I wish I was down, down under with those guys, you know, no prep Kings is there right now. I think their last race was a couple days ago and I know they're headed back to the States, but you know, a lot of love for you guys. We appreciate Appreciate you and thank you all for being a fan. This is what I find unique. Yesterday, somebody posted a video about one of the cars being the fastest in the world, right? And normally the comments are, you know, when I post, it's all that car's not real, da 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 da. Well, what I found out yesterday is when they posted something about George Dodworth car about being the fastest in the world, 300 of the thousand comments were like, that's bullshit. John Odom's GTR is the fastest in the world. So, who sets the rule, like his car, right? It's not, it's a two wheel drive car. It's got the same rear end as me. It's got the same tranny as me, but the motor's different, right? So now people are asking, where's the line? Is the line that it's hill, you know, cause so to me, Giddy really has the fastest GTR in the world, right? He said it with the tra stock transmission, the stock motor, of course they were upgraded, but that car was still pretty much original. Well, George Dodworth's car is half my car. So what's the difference, right? Where, where is my car not a real GTR compared to your car if half the back is you're just like mine? So we're finding out that people really are starting to have a discussion of, hey, if, it's, if you've taken the transmission and changed it and you've taken it to two wheel drive, then how is John's not the fastest in the world? So, I don't know. You know it's what? becoming a serious conversation. Did it start as a joke conversation, a bit of fun, calling it the world's quickest? Absolutely. Yeah, it's actually turned into Absolutely, it kind of started that way, right? Because I'm like, this is gonna piss everybody off, right? And, and it did, but it really has changed the conversation to, okay, if that's true, if John's car's not, not a real GTR, then how come, if, you're ha if your back half's two wheel drive, how, how is that not a real GTR? Where does it change? Where's the line change from, okay, now it's not a real GTR? Because if George Zodworth is saying that his car is two wheel drive, he's got the same Liberty, I think, as I'm, same rear end, right? The only thing original in that car is now the motor, right? Well, wait a minute. So I, my, the body of mine's original. So where's the line drawn? So it, it went from being a joke to a very serious conversation, which I think is cool because now people are talking about it. We drove the GTR to the shop, tore it apart, put it back on this. Yeah, it's a different motor and tranny, but there you go. There's actually one car that didn't start off as a GTR. That's the ETS's new blue one, right? Yes. New frame car. Yeah. So now we've got another argument. So right? where's that? How is that? A, so th it, there's a ton of argument, which is kind of cool because it puts what, this is what I've learned, especially being on the TV show. If they're talking about you or if they're talking about your car, if they're talking about your type of car, it's bringing light to the situation and it's cool for us. And all the GTR community should be happy about it. Somebody said it was actually, there's been an Australian GTR run faster. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's yes, cool. Actually, yeah. Australians actually have but that's a GDR. So that's really not a GTR. So that's where you're probably need some clarification. <laughs> We're having a good time. We're having fun. We're trying to make a little drama, get some likes, get some stuff going. You know what I mean? But have fun. At the end of the day, if you're not having a good day, if you're not having fun, life's not worth living. So we're trying to have some laughs. We're trying to do some serious racings, but we're trying to enjoy it along the way. Primarily, we built this car for Street Outlaws. We can run some no prep classes or some, some Pro Mod classes, right? It's a tiny bit heavier than Pro Mod because we still have to have original roof and quarter panels, which came from original GTR. We'll probably do some different racing. We always do Texas 2K. We always do World Cup finals, but my 09 GTR that I won last year, the 68 millimeter class, we actually changed it. We're doing the Mac Bronson thing. We're putting in a turbo 400. We're going to turn it into two wheel drive. And then we're, we're, we'll start running that car probably on the streets for the TV show. So now we'll have two GTRs, but will that one be real at this conversation? Who knows? If you come from Australia for a GDR festival and we're not, 
Did I just say GDR? <laughs> Jesus, I've been around you five minutes and I started talking like you. If you run a GTR or bring it here and run a festival, if we're not running Texas 2K, we will make a point to be there and support you because you come support us. Regardless of the rules, records and arguing, the GTR Unlimited class gave us some good racing in the finals, with Giddy in the ETS car up against Mac from the shop Houston. The DCT class was filled with R35 GTRs going head to head with supercars, which also made for some epic racing. Hi, my name is Sana Dadaboy. This is my R35 GTR. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and we're out here at Texas 2K 2023. So um, I've always been into cars. I can't really explain it. When I was like 10 years old, I would cut out pictures of like the Supras and Celicas from magazines and like put them up on my wall. Um, I bought a 1991 300ZX. So I, I loved it, but it was old, like that long ago, it was a 20 year old car. And I was like a broke college student. Fast forward to 2015, Finally, I was able to afford the car. I didn't really have a vision in mind when I bought the car. I just really wanted the car. And at the time, that was the fastest car I'd ever driven. Completely stopped. I started doing a little more research on modifications and that I went down the rabbit hole. I did full bolt-ons, E85, started really being able to feel what the car could do. And now we ended up with a 1400 horsepower car. <laughs> The motor was built by RD Engineering. It's still a stock crank, 3.8 liter motor, fully built bottom end and ported heads. Precision turbo, uh, 5870s, uh, with a custom turbo kit fabbed by Wisecraft Fabrication. Chris at Wisecraft was also the one that put the whole car together after the motor was sent to me by RD. Intakes, downpipes, uh, everything. And he does amazing work. Transmission, um, there's a stage three Shep Trans uh, drag pack. I'm running stock ECU with Ecutech and RD Engineering also tuned in. So we just finished this build just over a week ago, <laughs> I wanna say. Um, we had it on the dyno last Friday. Um, it made 1435 wheel horsepower, um, amazing. But of course, dyno is much different from how it actually performs at the track. So we showed up to Texas completely untested. I've never driven a car this fast before because I came from about, or my previous build was about 800. Uh, previous best time was a 9.6 at 144. So uh, my goal for this weekend is a mid eight. I would be happy with that. I know this car is capable of a lot more, but being out here at Texas 2K, the crowds are huge. I've never raced in front of this many people before. So that just adds to my nervousness and the pressure, but Yesterday, you know, I was really nervous going into it, but when I got out there, when I was suited up, buckled in, it was just me and the machine, and it actually went really well. Um, we had a little bit of issues dialing in the launch, and I was, you know, doing burnouts for the first time, and it was just, it's, it's, it's a whole process, because, you know, you come up to the line, you gotta back up into the water box, you gotta do your burnout, and you have to press a bunch of switches to get out of two-wheel drive mode, and you only have a certain amount of time to do all this, and all these eyes are on you thousands of eyes on you. So you really feel the pressure. I, I was a little nervous and, and I, I didn't do my best on my first run, but once I got that first run out of the way, it was solid. Second run last night, super late. You know, we were out here really, really late because you know how it goes. <laughs> but we got our second qualifier in. Again, had, a, had some issues with the launch, but everything else, I, I, I did everything that I could to make that pass perfect. And we did some revisions to the tune last night, came in this morning, and I very, I'm very confident we're gonna get our eight second pass today. So as far as I know, at this event, there are four other women that are racing R35s. girls we stick together there are no rivalries everyone's out there to help each other out because we all know what it's like to be a woman racing in a male dominated 
industry or, or male dominated sport. Um, so I, I personally have had an amazing experience with every single woman I've met here, whether they're racers or not. Um, it's, I don't know, we, it's, it's just a sense of community and, and you just want to help each other out because we're all in the same boat and, and we're all just here to have fun and do what we love. The GTR 68mm class was hotly contested with a full field of cars. The category was taken out by David Rorschneider in the AMS prep car, which goes into the sixes on 68mm turbos and no nitrous. That's crazy stuff. Controversy and arguments aside, the GTR scene is going strong in the USA. Full fields of cars racing, epic times, and some great rivalries against supercars, which makes for great entertainment. Most importantly, we met some good people, some great tuners and workshops and had plenty of discussions about holding a GTR Festival USA in the future. Stay tuned.